When you're publicly, publicly admitting your party doesn't care enough about black America, then it's time for a new black friend. Enter Dr. Ben Carson, who's been embraced recently because he's smart and helpful in assuaging their guilt. Carson is a bootstraps kind of guy, speaking their language, talking like he built his path from a poor kid to a pediatric neurosurgeon all by himself. He must have gotten government-backed school loans, which is a form of public assistance, but let's not let facts derail a good I built it without help story. Uh, latest example, NBC News going after Dr. Benjamin Carson. He's now being subjected to the left's intolerance. Unfortunately, he joins a long list of African Americans who have been criticized for the same thing, being conservative. Joining me now to respond, John Hopkins, University Director of Pediatric Neurosurgery, Dr. Benjamin Carson. You know, Dr. Carson, I'm, I'm sick of this. I am tired of African American conservatives. They can be called any name in the book. I want to get your reaction to it. Well, first of all, you know, the, the individual who is just speaking completely has his facts incorrect. Uh, some people uh, refuse to say the word, but I will say it. He's lying, and it's very easy to prove that by going back and looking at things that I've said. Uh, I think when people don't have, you know, anything worthwhile to talk about, and they can't attack you on your character, uh, then they start calling you names. Uh, this is a trick that we learned back in the third grade. Some phenomenon how do you explain it and it is do you think well, it's to silence african-american conservatives because there's a threat to yes uh, it, it's an attempt to uh, bludgeon people into silence and it works extremely well i can't tell you how many people come up to me uh, both african-americans and non-african-americans and say thank you so much for speaking out uh, they obviously feel the same way but they're afraid to speak out because they don't want to be ostracized uh, you know, fortunately, in my case, I really don't care what they have to say. Uh, you know, I care what God has to say, and I care about the principles that he has espoused. You know what? I'm in the same debate. If I cared what people said, I couldn't be sitting here right now. I'd be in a loony <laughs> bin, and you'd be visiting me and, and wondering about it, whether I need electric shock treatment or something. Well, not uh, only that, but the, the, the number of people who have positive things to say far true. outweigh the negative ones. Yeah, I, I just think, I wonder... It seems to me every election cycle, Dr. Carson, this issue of race comes up in a negative way. I mean, you can go back to 1998, Democratic Party, Radio Ed, Missouri. If you elect Republicans, black churches will burn. The, right. the James Byrd ad in 2000. Uh, they're going to put you all back in chains. Al Gore going into his, his black preacher voice like Hillary Clinton did before a predominantly African-American audience. Well, because everything for them is about race. You know, I like to say that uh, the, the reason that I don't talk about race that often is because I'm a neurosurgeon, and I look at the thing that actually makes a person who they are. It's not the cover, but for them, the cover is everything because they're very superficial thinkers. It isn't, isn't as a Christian, because I'm a Christian, the, the concept that we're brothers and sisters in Christ? Isn't that, re isn't that the real thing? Isn't that the Absolutely. really... Um, and that's considerably more important than any external characteristic, uh, which I believe a loving God gave us external differences because he didn't want us to be bored. How horrible would it be if everybody looked the same? All right, last question. Uh, we have the issue of this, the Supreme Court dealing with two issues involving gay marriage. I've asked you a lot of questions. I've never asked you that. You're, what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that uh, marriage is between a man and a woman, it's a well-established uh, fundamental pillar of society. And no group, uh, be they gays, be they NAMLA, uh, be they people who believe in bestiality, it, it doesn't matter what they are, they don't get to change the definition. So mm -hmm. it's not something that's against gays, it's, it's against anybody who wants to come along yeah. and change the fundamental definitions of pillars of society. It has significant ramifications. You know, it's interesting because Justice Sotomayor brought up the issue of, of polygamy and incest. Where does the definition stop? And I guess we'll be debating it for the weeks and months to come. But Dr. Absolutely. Carson, thank you for standing strong. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that treatment for just speaking your mind and, and being an individual. Thank you. It won't, won't be the end of it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome to my world. Good to see you. Okay. Uh,